I've covered a lot of different types of lesser known paleo media here on the channel, ranging from movies, books, video games, short stories, and even lost media. But I never thought I'd cover music as well, mainly because I figured music was just not really a thing under the scope of paleo media, at least not to the extent of all the other things that I've listed. How wrong I was. Recently, I've gotten a few requests to cover a music subgenre known as dinosynth on the channel, something that I didn't really have too much of an interest in at first, until I gave it a listen. The first score of this genre that I ever listened to was enough to get me hooked into this weird area of music. But of course, before we get into that, what exactly is synth? Synth, which is short for synthesizer, refers to the wide variety of electronic music typically made on a keyboard by altering and changing up different elements of the sound, like the volume, pitch, frequency, and so on. Obviously, it's a much more complicated process than that, but I'm not very music savvy, so you'll have to forgive me for the simplified definition. Because synth has a variety of tools to work with, it's considered to be a great sound to experiment with and has resulted in some unconventional but unique music. The rise of synth would give it a prominent name in the music industry, and because it was a pretty versatile sound, it was used in different genres like rock, punk, and metal. In fact, in the early 90s, a subgenre of music that blended synth with the dark ambience of metal music would emerge. This subgenre is known as dungeon synth, most likely due to the fact that blending these two sounds together gave off a dark medieval fantasy vibe. As the years would go by, the sound would settle more into that category, becoming more and more fantasy-like. And while I can't say for sure just how popular Dungeon Synth would get, it was enough to inspire a different subgenre of music that sounded similar but had a different theme going on. This subgenre would be known as Dino Synth, which is very similar to Dungeon Synth, being a music style that gives off a dark tone, but instead of a medieval and fantastical vibe, it has more of a prehistoric ambience to it. Dino Synth is more of a recent development, at least from what I can see. The earliest reference to actual actual dino synth that I could find is Turanian Skeletal Memory, an extensive instrumental with a primitive tone to it. And of course, that's just when it comes to dino synth specifically. Dinosaur-themed music as a whole would technically be traced all the way back to the early days of sound film, where scores were created to specifically fit the aesthetic of the prehistoric setting. But if we're talking about those specifically associated with the dino synth crowd, the earliest work I could find was made by someone that goes by the name of Thagomizer, who worked on several different experimental music projects between 2003 and 2006 under the name Neil Neil Neil, I, th I think. One of which was called Dinosaur Wars. However, the person behind Thagomizer, whose name is Casper Neal, actually stated during an interview with Hamilton Underground Press that those projects well predated his current Dinosynth phase and thus are separate from the things he's released under his new Thagomizer name. So yeah, the idea of dinosaur-themed music may not be new, but Dinosynth still offers a unique way in expressing that sound and simultaneously making it sound old school. But going back to Turanian, it also features a negative print of old paleo media art as its cover, which is a common thing you'll see amongst most, if not all, of these dino synth creators. Synth is oftentimes associated with a more old school sound, at least from what I've seen, so I can only conclude that the use of retro paleo art is meant to fit the aesthetic for the retro sounding music. Of course, this could be one of those cases where that was the intent from the start and everyone else just kind of followed along with that trend because that's what Dino Synth is commonly associated with now. Then again, if we relate this back to Dungeon Synth, you see a lot of old school art used as album covers for several works in that genre, so maybe this is just Dino Synth's version of that. Could be a number of reasons, but I can't deny it fits the aesthetic pretty well. When you listen to the music and look at the images, it really doesn't feel all that out of place. And speaking of the creators, there's actually a lot more than just Turanian and Thagomizer. There's also Diplodocus, which seems to be one of the more popular ones. There's also Archosaurus, Path of Giants, Pteranodon, Synthosaurus, and Electrosaurus Rex, who was actually one of the few people who recommended this video topic to me. So thank you for that, man. As far as the music itself, it's made up of instrumentals that have various different sounds for different moods and tones. Things like Into the Lost World by 
Archosaurus, Flying High by Pteranodon, and An Albion Knight by Electrosaurus Rex have more of a calm and almost relaxing sound to them. Things like Grazing Antarctopelta by Diplodocus, March of the Sauropods by Thagomizer, and Ode to Pachycephalosaurus by Synthosaurus offer a more curious and or adventure tone. And others like Desert Stalker and Theropod Trackway, both by Electric Saurus Rex, along with my personal favorite, Prowl of the Concavenator by Diplodocus, give off a much more eerie tone, as if you were witnessing a predator stalking its prey. Aside from all of this, there are also a lot of Dinosynth adjacent projects as well. Things like Devonian Dawn, Neanderthalensis, Mammoth Master, Woolly Rhinoceros, and Ambassador Dolgoon. These artists pretty much accomplish the same sound that Dinosynth has, that being a dark, serious, and primitive ambience and tone in a way that gives off an old school vibe. So there's nothing too extraordinary to them, but that doesn't mean they at all sound bad. In fact, overall, the music is actually pretty good, and a lot of them sound like they could be soundtracks for retro dinosaur games. A lot of their stuff have been uploaded to YouTube by archive channels, but if you want to support the creators themselves, a lot of them are on Bandcamp. I do recommend their music, especially if you're more of a fan of old school sounds. But that's pretty much all I have to say on Dinosynth. I know this was a shorter video than what I usually do for these one-off topics, but with how unique this one was, I couldn't help but make it its own video. And like I said earlier, there's just not a whole lot of information in general when it comes to Dinosynth, due to the fact that it's just a very new subgenre of music that hasn't really taken off quite yet. Thank you so much to everyone who suggested this strange but interesting video topic to me. If you want to check these creators and their music out, all of their links to their sites will be in the description down below. Thank you all so much for watching and please have a nice day.